Now, with all the latest headlines this Sunday morning, is the ITV News. Good morning, I'm Faye Barker. Australia's new Prime Minister has promised to address the country's climate change policies. Labour's Anthony Albanese beat long-term Conservative PM Scott Morrison, but it's still not clear if he has enough votes to govern alone. Callum Watkinson reports. Australia's new Prime Minister will be sworn in in Canberra on Monday, but by Tuesday he will be in Tokyo. A meeting there with President Biden, India's Narendra Modi and Japanese Premier Fumio Kishida is, he says, a priority for his as yet unformed government as it signals a new domestic direction for Australia with regard to a global challenge. It enables us to send a message to the world uh, that uh, we, uh, there is a change of government, uh, there will be some changes in policy, particularly with regard to climate change and our engagement uh, with the world uh, on those issues. I will return to Australia on Wednesday and uh, then we'll get down to business. First order of that business may be a deal with the Green Party, who, after floods and fires in recent years, saw the biggest gains in their history and may hold the balance of power in the Senate seen by some as sluggish in his approach to phasing out fossil fuels. Outgoing PM Scott Morrison made no mention of climate change as he conceded the election and concluded a decade of conservative rule. It has been the Australian people under the strong support of a strong government that has enabled all of us to come through to where we are today. And I think that's something that all Australians can give thanks for as we move forward. Mr Albanese may have won, but his party polled only a third of the first preference votes. The lowest ever level of support for Labour at a federal level. And when he returns from Tokyo, the hard work to form a government will really begin. Callum Watkinson, ITV News. A group of U.S. delegates, including one of Joe Biden's closest allies, are heading for Ireland and Northern Ireland in their mission to protect the Good Friday Agreement. Last night, they met Foreign Secretary Liz Truss to express their concern about the government's plan to draft, draft legis legislation to remove parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol from the Brexit Treaty. Well, that's despite warnings it could risk a full trade war with the EU. Downing Street officials set to be named by Sue Gray in her report into lockdown parties have until tonight to make any objections. Ms Gray is then expected to publish her long-awaited report within days. Around 30 individuals, including the Prime Minister, have been told they're likely to be named. Meanwhile, Labour has said a so-called secret meeting between the PM and Sue Gray could damage the integrity of the investigation. Now, with the threat of major rail strikes this summer, the government is reported to be considering plans for a minimum staffing requirement. Transport Secretary Grant Shapps told the Sunday Telegraph that ministers are looking at new laws which would make industrial action illegal unless a certain number of staff are working. The RMT union is currently balloting 40,000 members on strike plans. Thousands of runners are due to take to the streets of Manchester today to mark the fifth anniversary of the Manchester Arena terror attack. It's the first time in three years that people in Manchester can mark the anniversary free of coronavirus restrictions. Survivors of the bombing and Mayor Andy Burnham are among those running a 10-kilometre race through the city. In football, it's set to be a dramatic final day in the Premier League. The big question is, will Manchester City retain the title or will Liverpool be crowned champions? It's the first time in 10 years that the title, top four and relegation are all still to be fully decided on the last day. All 20 teams are in action from four o'clock. Finally, the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall are guest starring in a special episode of EastEnders to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. The royal couple secretly filmed the scenes earlier this year when they visited the set of the long-running BBC soap. In the programme, Charles and Camilla will surprise the residents of Albert Square as they hold a street party. That's it for now. We'll be back with an update at 5 to 1. Until then, have a good morning. Bye-bye.